the deepest parts of our oceans are still a mystery to us even to this day. Although recent technology has allowed us to explore depths humans have never been to before, questions still remain about this alien world. One of those questions is about the sheer size of some of the species down there. Deep sea creatures can completely dwarf their near surface counterparts. This is known as deep sea gigantism and is responsible for monsters of the world's oceans. But why does it happen? That's what we're going to explore. There are a lot of reasons at play for why deep sea creatures are so huge. The first is simple evolution and survival of the fittest. The deeper you go in the ocean, the harsher it gets. It's pitch black with no sunlight, food is scarce, and the temperatures are near freezing. So creatures must adapt to survive. Being bigger is, simply put, a massive advantage when competition for basic resources is so difficult. Bigger animals are faster and can go further to find food or a mate. They are better at storing food with a more efficient metabolism. So when a big feed does arrive from shallower waters like a big carcass, then large predators can not only consume more, but can also store it for longer as well. This is known as Kleiber's Law, which can be applied to all life on Earth. This law states that the larger a species is, the more efficient its metabolic rate. This is how the colossal squid only needs to burn 45 calories per day versus the 2,000 of an average human woman. The giant creatures of the deep tend to wait for their prey to come towards them, rather than the other way around. As well as being able to exist for longer and without as many calories as their smaller counterparts, organisms also pass this trait on to their offspring, which gives them the best fighting chance of staying alive in the depths of the ocean. In organisms with planktonic eggs or larvae, more initial stored food reserves means more distance they can drift for before they need to find the next feed. These giant creatures have a great ability of existing on very little, which is a massive advantage when living in an environment that offers very little. The giant isopod, which we'll look at in a bit more detail later, has adapted brilliantly to gorge on food when available. This helps them to survive five years without food. The cold also has an effect on metabolism and slows everything down considerably. This includes the aging process. This, twinned with a lack of predators in deep sea, means animals grow slower and live a lot longer than we are used to. For example, the Greenland shark. It is slow moving and can grow to be 7.3 meters long with a weight of 1.4 metric tons. The way it gets this big is because its growth is spread out over a lifespan that extends for hundreds of years. In fact, these sharks only grow approximately one centimeter a year, which makes sense once you learn that they live between 250 to 500 years old. So, as far as the Greenland shark is concerned, it is the cold, not being eaten, and a massive lifespan that makes them so large. The theory that creatures in cold environments tend to be larger is known as Bergman's Law. This states that species in cold regions have been observed to be bulkier than individuals of the same species in warm regions. This would seem to be the case in the ocean as well as there are plenty of examples of this with deep sea gigantism. The main reasons why the cold plays such an important role in the size of these creatures is that it's thought to result in increased cell size and increased lifespan like we've explored with the Greenland shark. There's further evidence that the cold contributes to gigantism. Near Antarctica, it happens a lot closer to the surface than the rest of the globe. There are giant sea slugs, sponges, worms, sea spiders, and even giant single-celled organisms within scuba range, as shallow as 9.1 meters. It's thought that Antarctica might be linked to an increased oxygen supply in the cold waters surrounding the frozen continent. These increased dissolved oxygen levels are also thought to play a role in deep-sea gigantism worldwide. In 1999, a study was conducted with benthic amphipod crustaceans, and the conclusion was that maximum potential organism size was directly linked to increased dissolved oxygen levels. 
These are usually found in deeper waters. The reason for these increased levels is due to increased pressure, decreasing salinity levels, and the cold temperature. There is a theory that suggests creatures have adapted to become larger because larger organisms are able to take in more dissolved oxygen in the ocean, and this avoids the risk of asphyxiation. However, there is a limit to growth in these environments. A 2017 study looked at giant Arctic sea spiders, which can grow to about the size of a dinner plate. Research found that the larger sea spiders had lower oxygen levels in their bodies. Growth needs oxygen, and it appeared from this study that creatures reach a plateau when they don't have enough to metabolize calories for any further growth. The declining oxygen level in this study's subjects suggested that something is shifting in the balance of oxygen supply and demand. There is also a theory that suggests the deep sea world is similar to that of an island. This theory suggests that limited isolated resources create a separate ecosystem, which allows bigger species to be developed. This is why the Galapagos tortoise is so large. The island rule simply states that species have the capacity to grow larger on an island, and there's evidence to suggest the same thing happens in deep oceans. A 2006 study compared gastropods, such as snails and slugs, across different depths, and it was found that the island rule did apply to them. There are huge deep-sea species very similar to their smaller, shallow varieties, like the giant deep-sea isopod. This strange lobster-like creature may be no bigger than an inch or two on the surface, but can grow to around 30 centimeters in the deep. There's no doubt that the depths of the ocean provide us with a world of fascination. The gigantic sea creatures that we've discovered in the deep amaze us for good reason. Although we still don't know for sure what exactly is the reason for these large creatures' growth, what we do know is that it's likely a few contributing factors. The temperature, increased oxygen, and survival of the fittest, or in this case, largest. What do you think about these gigantic sea creatures? Let us know in the comments and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then subscribe to Brain Impact for more. Thanks for watching.